Sketching rational functions, part two, for large values of x. So we have some learning goals for this video. First, by the time you're done with this video and the associated web work problems, you should be able to approximate a rational function for large values of x by a constant when that's possible. And we'll talk about a family of functions for which that is possible. And we're going to do this as before using asymptotics. The second goal will be to recognize a Hill function, uh, which is a general class within the rational functions. And for the Hill function, you should be able to determine the Hill coefficient, its horizontal asymptote, and its half max. So let's jump straight over to an example. Here we have one written up. f of x is equal to 32x to the 4 divided by 16 plus x to the 4. So for practice, I suggest you try and come up with an approximation for x near 0. But for now, I'm going to focus on x large. So in the numerator, if x is large, um, there's not really much we can say because we're not adding two quantities, one of which is large compared to the other. So we actually are just stuck with what we've got in the numerator, unable to make any simplifications. However, in the denominator, if x is very large, then x to the 4 will be extremely large. And when we add 16 to that number, we're not going to change x to the 4 very much. So what that means is we can just omit the 16 and get an approximation for the denominator. And so overall, what we get is 32x to the 4 divided by approximately x to the 4. And once we've done that, we can cancel these x to the 4s and we're left with just 32. So this is an approximation to f for large x. Okay, so the idea is the same. We're just omitting the small, uh, the small component of a sum of two numbers that are very different in size. And so we call this value the horizontal asymptote. And when we graph it, you'll see why we refer to it as horizontal. That comes later. Okay, so this function actually happens to be in a form that uh, makes it what we call a Hill function. So a Hill function is a rational function that looks like so. So an f of x with some constant a multiplying x to the n, all divided by some constant b to the n plus x to the n. Now you notice in the example above, I don't have quite so many n's. I've got a x to the 4 and an x to the 4, but my constant here wasn't written as something to the n. It was just written as 16. But you'll notice that 16 is the same as 2 to the 4. So although I don't have it exactly in the Hill form, it's easy for me to switch it in this case to 2 to the 4. And then I can see that b is exactly 2. OK, so when we see a function of this form, first we know it's rational, but we also know that it's called a Hill function. So what are the parts of a Hill function? Well, there's A, which we found above is the horizontal asymptote. That is, it's an approximate value of the function for large values of x. We also have N, which is referred to as the Hill coefficient. A coefficient is usually not the term we give to exponents, but that's the traditional name for it in this context. And b is what we refer to as the half max. And I put this in quotes because I'm personally not a big fan of using the word max in this context, but that's what's commonly used. And let me emphasize here before we go on that very often we're talking about um, biochemical problems uh, with Hill functions. That's where they originated. Um, and so x is often a concentration. If you figure out what the units have to be, in order to add two quantities, they have to have the same units. And when you take a concentration to the nth power and add this thing to it, you, we, we can figure that this one has to have the same units, which means b has to have the same units as x. That means that b is actually a uh, reasonable value of x. So this is actually, when we say half max, we mean it's an x value. So it's going to be, in some way, usable as an x value. 
Okay, and now for modeling purposes, we're often going to be worried about the case where a, n, and b are all positive quantities, and n is an integer, although not always. Okay, so let me say a few words about um, why these are given these names. So first, the horizontal asymptote. If you plug in large values of x, then we can omit the bn from this expression, the xn's cancel, and we're left with just a. So as before, where we found 32 was the horizontal asymptote, that's what we find a is in general for this, this type of expression. The Hill coefficient, what does the Hill coefficient tell us? Well, let's go back to our near zero approximations and see what the Hill function looks like near the origin. So near the origin, we have a sum in the denominator, and when x is small, it's not going to make a big impact on b to the n. So this is approximately a to the n over, whoops, ax to the n, sorry, over b to the n. And a over b to the n is just some constant, we'll call it c to the n. So near the origin, near x equals zero, f of x looks like a power function with power n. So that is what the Hill coefficient tells us about the shape of the function. And then finally, where does this half max come from? If we plug in b as the x value, then what do we get? We get a b to the n divided by b to the n plus b to the n. And you'll notice that is just a b to the n divided by 2b to the n. And these b to the n's cancel out, and we're left with half the value of the asymptote. So those are the components of what we call a Hill function, and this is a rough intro to what that information uh, tells you. In the next video, I will say more about graphing Hill functions.